Welcome to Melt University's 2020 Summer Program. This year, our virtual intern program will help you build your brand, inform you on a variety of career paths, and introduce you to top executives in sports and marketing. Here's your host, President and CEO of Melt, one of the largest independent sports and event marketing agencies in the country, Vince Thompson. Welcome back, students, virtual Melt University, Summer 2020. We roll on. I can't believe we're entering uh, week four. It's been a tremendous summer. We've had tremendous guests, tremendous podcasts, tremendous lunch and learn, uh, tremendous feedback uh, from our students and our speakers. Uh, and today we have a very, very special guest, uh, a very dear friend of mine, uh, a gentleman who, when I was starting Melt back in the early 2000s, uh, gave me a tremendous opportunity to work with and for the coca-cola company gave me a chance uh, took a took a a chance on me and and nearly 20 years later we're still very really good friends and business partners and and we're very fortunate to have my dear friend jim dinkins join us today the senior vice president of the coca-cola company and president of coca-cola north america Jim graduated, like many of you listeners, from the University of Georgia, where my son Carter is, an MBA from Emory University. We've done a lot of work with Emory University over the past. And prior to joining the Coca-Cola Company, had a hugely successful career uh, with Procter & Gamble. Some of our speakers, uh, such as uh, Tia Cummings, had uh, careers at Procter & Gamble. We talk about Procter & Gamble and how one of the premier CPG companies in the world prepares uh, individuals to go into other major CPGs, joined Coca-Cola in 1988, huge diverse experience working across many strategic areas. Where Jim and I met was when he was with the sports marketing department um, in the early 2000s, Coca-Cola had signed a giant deal with the NCA, which is still intact today, uh, 17, 18 years later, has risen through the ranks, was the president of the Minute Maid Business Unit. Many people may not know uh, that the Coca-Cola company owns Minute Maid. They own the Fairlife Milk Company. Uh, we own uh, Vitamin Water. We have an investment in Body Armor and many, many other strategic innovations across the country. Rose from the Minute Maid business unit into the chief retail sales officer. And as we talked about last week with some of our guests, is that the Coca-Cola company considers their major retail partners their customers. Retailers such as Target and Walmart and Kroger and Publix and then another division of the house, uh, which is McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's and some of those guys rose through those ranks and became president of the 7-Eleven global customer team. There's, as you know, thousands of these convenient chains. Uh, and then um, much to my happiness and a lot of people's happiness uh, became the president of, of, of Coke North America. Jim serves on many uh, uh, industry leadership boards, contributes to the community through the Boys and Girls Club, the board of Morehouse College. And so, uh, Jim, welcome. What an honor and pleasure and privilege to have you on Mount University today. Thank you, Vince. It's an honor for me to be a part of it. Thanks for asking. Well, we, uh, uh, you know, we always look forward to you coming visiting in the summer and, 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 and we decided to <clears throat> evolve Mount University into a virtual format. So, as we are, you know, we're talking to our students about various career opportunities and career paths and career obstacles. And obviously we're trying to equip our kids um, as much as possible to find jobs in a post COVID world. It's going to be even more competitive, but talk about the, the many people don't know that the Coca-Cola company per se, the mothership, as I call them versus they providing the product and the marketing support to what we call our distributors or our bottlers. Talk a little bit about that history and the complexity of the organization. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Well, about 134 years ago, a uh, pharmacist from Columbus, Georgia, named John, uh, Dr. John Pemberton, um, invented Coca-Cola. And he invented the drink that was served in drink emporiums or, or drug stores, and you take the syrup and you mix it with water and you'd have a finished drink. And a few years ago, a man named Asa Candler, uh, who some of you in Atlanta from Atlanta might have heard of the name Candler, bought the company and he expanded what uh, Dr. Pemberton had started. 
and then uh, about, uh, let's see, 121 years ago, uh, two lawyers from Chattanooga, Tennessee came to Mr. Candler and said, we would like to, instead of having the people come in and drink finished Coca-Cola in these places, we'd like to bottle Coke and take it to places around the United States. So he gave them, sold them the rights to franchise Coca-Cola. And so from that day, 121 years ago or so, we've had Coca-Cola bottlers all around the country selling our products. In the United States, we have 67 of them and they uh, sell the bottle products uh, to our customers in the marketplace. Yeah, we, 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 we talked about it. So Coca-Cola is uh, served and poured in more than 200 con- countries across the world and it's the most complex and the most valuable distribution system in the world. And so um, as you're growing up in Georgia, you go to the University of Georgia, we talk about uh, a lot about two things we talk a lot about, uh, Jim. One is passion and one is finding yourself and finding the opportunities on the college campus, like the college campus is the ultra professional lab. Talk about some of your experiences because if I had pulled you aside you know a few years ago when you were a student at the University of Georgia said hey do you think you'd be the president of Coca-Cola one day you may have said hey that'd be great or you may have looked at me crazy but talk about sort of the beginning of this path because we tell these kids if and when they get back to the college campuses which they will this college experience is invaluable in shaping and forming their career and passion yes um so uh, where it got started for me, Vince, is, uh, you know, I had the, the opportunity to go to the University of Georgia, and um, I got involved in a couple of things that kind of uh, helped me stand out a little bit from the crowd. Um, the first one was uh, experience, and the other one was really economically, so I'll talk about the experience. So um, as a sophomore, I became the vice president of my fraternity. Uh, mm-hmm. I was in charge of uh, managing all the committees. Uh, which had to do from everything from the food preparation to membership to all those types of things. So it was a great leadership experience for me that I was able to really learn at a young age. The other, the other side of it is economically, um, I, I needed to help pay my way through school. Um, and so one of my uh, fraternity brothers graduated and started a, a convenience store. So I actually worked in that convenience store. And so I learned wow. uh, at an early age about uh, retailing uh, in an independent convenience store. And then I learned about leadership uh, through having a, a, an officer position in a fraternity. And as it came time to, to get jobs and those types of things and talk to employers, those were a couple of things that, that stood out um, to them. So that's, uh, those are a couple of things I, I was able to learn at UGA. Well, you, you hit several headlines <clears throat> that we talked to our kids about. And, and, and the name of my book is Building Brand New. But you talked about experience. You talked about learning the retail business. You talked about initiative. You talked about leadership. You talked about understanding organization. And so as we're teaching these kids how to brand and package themselves on their resume, wittingly or unwittingly, you were learning these tools a little bit out of necessity, but a little bit about uh, self-starting and self-initiative. And so if an individual is a job seeker, not only with the Coca-Cola company, not only with uh, one of our subsidiaries, not only with one of our bottlers, talk about some of these formative things as, a, as an entry-level candidate that you and the company are looking for um, based on the college experience. It, you know, it's great to make the 4.0. We say that it's a tremendous accomplishment, but however, there, there there's more to it than that, right? Yeah, absolutely, Vince. And it's interesting that you talked about your book, because when I talk to young people myself, when they ask me for, for my thoughts, uh, the first thing I talk to them about is, um, what is your brand? You know, what do you, what do you stand for? If someone was going to describe you, what are the characteristics that they would describe you as? Because everybody's unique. Everybody's kind of their own diamond or their own snowflake, and they're, and they're unique. And what are those two or three things that that are unique about you, that you're passionate about, that you stand out, and that and that you really you really get excited about. Whether that could be leadership, or you're curious, or your or you or you like to write, or you know those types of things. So I think that's the first step. I think the other thing, as you mentioned, though, is 
is did you go through school as a participant or did you go through school as a leader? And I think that that leadership is the thing that stands out to us is that, you know, the reality is that young people as they go through college haven't had the chance to do a lot of things that that people that might be a little uh, older have had just because of their, you know, their age. But the question is, how did you use that time while you were there? Were you a member of something or were you a leader of something? And I think that's, I think that's really important. And, and the third thing I would say, uh, Vince, when I talk to young people is also, what did you accomplish in that leadership position? You know, did you take something that was there and did you make it better? Did you set goals for yourself and did you achieve it? So I think for me, when you look at someone, it would be, what are the unique skills that they bring to the table for your team that you're looking for? The second thing is, you know, were they a leader or were they a participant? And then when they led, what kind of results did they generate? Those are some things that, that I look at. Well, I, and, I, and, and students, I want you to listen to this. I want you to rewind it. I want you to replay it. <clears throat> Leadership, accomplishment, results, goals. It's okay to have fun uh, at school while you're there. Goodness knows we all had fun. But, but, but Jim, we talk about these, the, the, the kids today. Every action that they're taking is a, is a form of a job audition and how they're communicating what they've done to you because the how many i mean ballpark the coca-cola company gets hundreds of thousands of resumes every year for jobs right okay get a lot yeah <laughs> so so it's probably a a, 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 a a number to infinity and so you got to stand out with leadership accomplishments uh and results and so coming out of georgia your first job, I think, as I recall, was with the Procter Gamble Company, PNG. Correct, it was. Okay, so how did that process start? Well, it's interesting, Vince, because uh, uh, what, I, I, I'm glad you asked me that question because I tell people, I said, you know, it, 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 it's not where you start; it's where you finish. And mm -hmm. and I was an okay student, uh, but I wasn't, you know, the kind of student that that was at the top of the class. And in fact, when it came time to interview, we have a, had a placement center, a college placement center office at University of Georgia, still have it. And uh, they have what they call the closed list and the open list. And the closed list was a list that the faculty had recommended students to be interviewed to students. And then the open list were those that you would actually write your name down, go get in line and sign up and write your name down. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was not on the closed list. I was on the open list, but but, but I found out when the open list would be available. And so I got down to the placement office super early so I could be one of the first people in line, if not the first person, and uh, signed up for interviews. And mm -hmm. I signed up for interviews and, and uh, a company like Procter & Gamble who had a closed list of candidates and open list of candidates, I worked my way through that interview process and I was, I was fortunate to get the job. So I went through the traditional sign up at the placement office and get on the list and do your best and go interview. And that's how I got the job. Well, you, 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 you talk about several things that I sort of hit on, because like I said, it, I wasn't, uh, I was an average student as well. I did well in my journalism classes, but I couldn't pay attention enough to really excel from a great perspective. But you just pointed out a couple of, uh, of really big things is that you took the initiative to get up early that day, get in line, sign up, be first, go through that process. You weren't going to allow your grades to be a barrier to a successful entry in the in the marketplace. And we and we we talk a lot about that uh, with the kids. Is that um, <clears throat> they're going to be barriers. They're going to be obstacles. You know, people say, you know, Jim, what did you and Vince do for a living? I say we're in the rejection business. We get told no all the time as well. But we got to keep grinding through this and, and overcome these barriers and these obstacles because they're gonna kids are gonna get thrown off the saddle. We're all experiencing it now in this in this in this crazy COVID world. But but sort of talk about what drove you to say, hey, I gotta get up first and I gotta get in line and I gotta grind through this process. Yeah, that's that's a good question. And for me, I was very fortunate in that I had uh, two great role models in my parents. Uh, my father was a lifelong Methodist minister. My mother was a school teacher, uh, very um, hardworking people, uh, very practical people. And my father uh, taught me a lesson years ago that I never forget. He used to tell me, he said, son, there's two things you can control in your life, your effort and your attitude. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and and everything else um, is is has other types of influencing factors, but your effort and attitude are a hundred percent in your control. Um, how much you put into something, uh, how you react to things, what's your outlook on it, and so I was brought up with that type of 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 of, of model, and so therefore I just took it with me, and I tried hard, and and I knew that. You know, it was up to me whether I wanted to get up early and go sign up or not. And but I had a good foundation and a good, a good uh, role model in my parents. So that's where that came from. And so, I, as I recall, I think you've told me this story. I, don't, I know I'm not going to get it all right, but but so you're young and rising through the Procter and Gamble organization, and you get a call one day that says, uh, "Hey, uh, Folgers Coffee is going to sponsor NASCAR." And as I recall, your response was somewhat humorous, correct? Yeah, I mean, what well, you're you're kind you're kind you're kind of close in the story. I, I I was I was actually already hired and I was in uh I was okay. in uh, I was in Daytona B, uh, I was in Orlando. My first sales job was in Orlando. So uh-huh. was, as you mentioned, it was in their beverage business. It was Coffee Folgers Coffee at the time, which now Smucker's actually owns and it was a orange juice brand called Citrus Hill. And uh, I was a, a, a sales representative and I had Daytona Beach in my territory and I got a call and, uh, and, and somebody asked me, they said, you know, um, you're, you're from the South, right? And I said, yes. And they said, do, do, you, know, do you, know what, you know what NASCAR is? And I said, not really. And they said, um, I said, oh, you mean stock cars? And they said, yeah, stock cars. And they said, we're going to create a motor, uh, motor racing uh, program and uh, we're going to have a car on Folgers car uh this would have been uh for i believe 1989 right and that we'd like you to go market it and get something out of it so that was uh that was one of my first experiences in uh in sports marketing was having a chance to work in that uh, motorsports world but so but unwittingly you you but, but, but well two things you accepted that assignment sight unseen because a that was your assignment and you and, and b you were going to do the best with your assignment but unwittingly, and we talk to the kids a lot about this, your path is your path. That experience portended well for you within one of your roles within the Coca-Cola company, within sports marketing at the NCA. So what we try to tell our kids is sometimes you may have to t- accept an assignment or a job or a supervisor that you don't really want to be a part or you don't understand it at the time, but maybe down the line, there's a there's a reason for that, and so your experience within NASCAR shaped, informed your uh, and influenced one of your big roles at, at the Coca Cola Company because at the time in 2002 or three, Coke made a multi hundred million dollar investment in NCA. So sort of so we we try to tell our kids, hey, your path is going to be your path, and maybe you can't see it at the time. So you've had a lot of experience in that, would you say? Yeah, I've been very fortunate, Vince. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to tell uh, students, um, if, if I use a golf analogy, and hopefully people can identify with this, is that think about your career as, as a golf bag. And you're accumulating different clubs. And if you play golf, you know, you need a driver to get down the, down the uh, course. Uh, but if you've only got a driver in your bag, you're not going to be very successful. You need a lot of different clubs. And so I've tried to look experience at experiences as building out a, a, a golf bag of different clubs mm-hmm. so that when the opportunities for me came, I was ready to take advantage of them. And so I always try to think about opportunities that way. In fact, I actually had a lot of jobs that I had the chance to take that were the first time they had been created before I took them. Mm-hmm. And I was really always excited about new things and trying things, but but using different experiences to build out your golf bag, shall we say, so you'll be ready for the challenge in front of you. Well, and, and you've had, uh, I mean, obviously a tremendous career at the Coca-Cola Company, and you've covered a lot of areas within the within the company and a lot of customers. <clears throat> but one thing that strikes out uh, strikes out to me in my experiences with you and then just reading your resume is that you've never been afraid to accept a new challenge or new assignment within the company, really no matter what it was, because probably you may or may not have known a lot about the orange juice business. You may have may not have known a lot about convenience stores um, and those types of things, but you've never 
fail to accept a challenge or back down uh, from a challenge. And so really kind of when somebody comes to you and says, hey, we've got this new opportunity to sign the challenge, What's sort of going through your mind and how would you translate that advice to young students who are beginning their climb? Well, that's, that's a great question. Um, here, here's the way I would think about it, Vince. Um, there's, there's a few things for me personally, but I think there's a, a thing that I can talk about that might be more broadly applied for the students. The first one is, as I mentioned, my father was a minister and so in the Methodist faith, you move around a lot. And so I had moved around a lot as a kid. And so I was the new kid in, in town, a new kid in school on numerous occasions. And so with that, I believed I was shaped by not being afraid of new things and trying new things. And actually, new things really excited me and, and they got me jazzed. Mm -hmm. And so and so therefore, I wasn't afraid of trying new things because it was energizing and exciting for me. There's a book out. Uh, by a lady named Carol Dweck, and she's a professor, and it's called Growth Mindset. And I would encourage all the students out there to get the book Growth, Growth Mindset and read it. And what it really talks about is that all of these things you do in your life are about learning, and you're learning from the experience. You're not afraid of failing because, you, because what you're getting out of it is a learning experience to make you better and to make your life more full. So I think as you look at these things as learning experiences, it takes out the fear, it takes out the concern. Uh, it's obvious people are concerned with failure, but at the same time, if you look at it as a learning experience, you know, it's something you can take with you. One of our one of our big sayings that we have in our program is failure is only the failure to try. And I think basically what you summed up and 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 we always ask our leaders and we ask our participants to recommend a great book that they've read in Fluence Simmons. So Growth Mindset, um, you know, listeners and students uh, is a great book. And um, I reckon, highly recommend that you read that. So that's a great takeaway. So also, Jim, uh, talk about on your career path. And as you're building this career, you continue to build this career, the value of relationships, the value of nurturing and maintaining relationships, the value of the golden rule, particularly the speed of which this all, uh, you know, flies around now. Talk to our kids about your philosophy on the value of relationships and, 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 and how that translates to them. Yeah, I think that, you know, people um, love doing business with people and working with people that they can affiliate with, that they can trust, that they can can understand. And so I think that's really important. I mean, one of the things that I always, when people had asked me for advice and they said, you know, give me some advice uh, on, 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 you know, career and how I should think about it. You know, one of the things that I always talk about is be a great teammate, you know, be a type of person that somebody wants to work with. Um, because not only does it just make the job more fun and it makes it because you get to know people personally, but it's it, you create an atmosphere where the jobs come get you. You know, if you if you develop the right skills and you put the right points on the board and you drive accomplishments and you're somebody people want to work with, the jobs come get you. So relationships are super important because it's not only human interaction, but it's how you develop trust with people and you understand people better. And at the end of the day, that's how you how you get things done. You understand what people need. And you try to give them a, fulfill that need in a way that's better than maybe something somebody else could do. So it's super important. Well, I, and I and I like I said, I think I think you just hit the nail on the head because like you know, there's no accident that you've been able to head up one of the big biggest companies, biggest brands in the world, climb all the way through these amazing ranks, which tells me and our listeners that you've always been willing to accept those assignments, uh, do your best, be the great teammate. And those jobs and those opportunities will find you and they'll seek you out. And, and, and another important thing, you, you talk about your parents and the value of mentoring. Talk, and, and the Coca-Cola company is one of the best companies, if not the best companies in the world, about mentoring uh, young kids, young professionals, young students. I try it myself. Talk about the importance and the value of our students seeking out mentors now while they're on, on, on college campuses, no matter who they may be, right? Yes, um, it, it's really important, and, and a couple of dimensions of that just to share. First is they can help you learn things that you can learn without having to step in the pothole on the way to learning. Mm 
Right. So they, they can help you navigate things that you just don't know because you hadn't had the experience in terms of navigating and making right decisions and 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 not having to 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 make a lot of mistakes that you can get around them. Mm-hmm. The other thing they could do, and I would encourage you with your mentors, is to ask them to be truthful and direct with you. Some of the best mentors I've ever had told me things I didn't really want to hear. And they told me things that they saw that I could do better that I didn't see in myself and looking looking for my view that I really understood. And it was super helpful for me to go, okay, wow, that's something I didn't really know, but that's something that I could work on and I can get better at that. And, and they really gave me a gift by giving me that kind of feedback. Yeah, we, 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 we tell our students like, you know, you don't want things sugarcoated, you know, take that constructive criticism. And I wish I had learned early in my age not to take it personal because you want to hear the truth. You want to hear what you can do better. And I think students, as you listen to this, is that constructive criticism, seek out from your mentors, hey, what can I do better? What could I have done differently? And, 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 and that's a great segue into that, Jim. As you're interviewing, you know, candidates uh, for jobs, what stand, are they reaching out to you on LinkedIn? Are they sending you a, a letter or something like that? What gets your attention? All the thousands of, you know, solicitations that, that, that you might get or you've gotten over your career from jobs and potential employees. I would say the first thing would be some of it's a little bit what I touched on earlier, but I would say the first thing I would say is distinctiveness, meaning is there something that jumps out off the piece of paper that's really unique? And it could be a school you went to. It could be a job, summer job you had. It could be a class that you studied. It could be a paper you wrote. It could be something like that. So I would Mm -hmm. say, I would say distinctiveness. Um, The second thing would be, as I mentioned a little bit before, um, how did you lead while you were where you were? Mm -hmm. Um, And the third thing would really be, what did you accomplish when you were there? Mm -hmm. Um, And, 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 you know, I talk to um, college students all the time and I try to get to them early in their college career because they get acclimated. I'm like, look, just don't, the, the grades are super important, but just don't be a participant. If you just if you're just a participant, you will have missed out on experience, but you'll also missed out on an opportunity to stand out. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I know you wake up some morning and go, oh, my goodness, I'm the president of the, of the Coca-Cola company, the most bonded brand in the world. And so what and even to me walking in that building as many times as I walk, it never gets old to me and going on those sidelines, it never gets old to me. But what's your favorite part of your job? I mean, you got you got thousands of people that work for you and report to you all over the country. But what's the favorite part uh, uh, of this great job? Well, Vince, you you hit it on the nose. I would tell you, I'm very humbled and honored to have the job. I mean, as a kid who grew up in Metro Atlanta and drove by the Coke Building on going through downtown Atlanta all those years, mm-hmm. or going to the Varsity, or going to Braves game, or whatever, and just looking over there and seeing the name on the side of the building, I I never really dreamed that I would have this opportunity. Um, and and I, I would say the favorite part of my job is the fact that I get to represent 8,000 people every day and try to do the right thing to, to mm-hmm. give them a better experience and have a better outcome for them and their families. Um, I basically tell my organization, I'm your elected official you didn't elect. And so right. I, I, I feel like I represent them. And so the favorite part of the job, quite frankly, is just the notion that I can hopefully have a positive impact um, on a lot of people, a lot of families, and uh, and on a brand that's been around a long time. Well, I mean, I, I think that's amazing advice. And, and as we wrap up today's interview, any any parting shot, words of wisdom, favorite saying, other books and podcasts that because our kids are really asking for this. They're like sponges out there and they're and, and we're really getting a tremendous amount of feedback. Any uh, parting shots, <clears throat> words of wisdom, like I said, resources that they need and should be. We talk about um, you know, their image on social media. We talk about how they represent themselves on LinkedIn. We talk about employers are looking for that now. But from where you sit, um, you know, any any other words of wisdom? The only thing I would just just emphasize is there's a couple of things I would say, you know, um, when my when my daughter went to college, I have one daughter and I wrote her a letter when she went to college. And I said, 
I said, they say that these are the best years of your life. And I said, I don't know who they are, but they're right. These are the best years of your life. And so you definitely want to enjoy yourself and have a good time, but you also want to make sure that you're getting the most out of the experience. It's one of the few times in your life that you're going to be able to spend 90% learning, whether that's socially or academically or leadership wise, all that kind of thing. So the first thing I would say is soak it all in and get everything you can out of it. The second thing I'd say though, is that word around leadership. Make a difference while you're there and lead something and be in charge of something so that you can learn and get those experiences. I can't tell you how much I learned trying to work with 100 young college men uh, from everything from menus to, mm-hmm. to social events to, to you know, paying bills. All that. It was a huge learning experience for me that really helped me. So I would just say, again, don't be a participant, be a leader. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, this has been amazing. Uh, we know you're really, really busy uh, executive and crazy stuff going on. And, 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 and just the fact that you've taken your time to share this words of wisdom is a, is a testament to your leadership, uh, a testament to your leadership of the Coca-Cola company and how you comport yourself, um, you know, across life. So Jim Dinkins, uh, president of Coca-Cola North America, graduate University of Georgia, great Great career at Procter & Gamble, tremendous career uh, at the Coca-Cola company. But I think what you what you guys see in my dear friend is that, you know, he's a servant leader. We talk about that. We talk about giving back. Uh, the fact he would take the time to share these words of wisdom. Uh, he is uh, very active on Instagram. And you'll see how he leads the Coca-Cola company. You'll see how he represents the Coca-Cola company and the thousands and thousands of employees and and like I said, he gave this country boy a chance, which has led to so many, many opportunities and success together. So, uh, Jim, uh, we thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your knowledge and for sharing that with the with the students of, uh, of, of Melt University. Thank you, Vince. Uh, it's always great to be with you and the students. I want to wish all of them great luck coming into this uh, academic year and uh uh, it should be a very interesting one, hopefully a fruitful one for everybody. And Vince, great to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, students. Summer Virtual Melt University 2020, we roll on. Thank you, Jim Dinkins. Thanks, Vince. Hope you enjoyed today's virtual class. We'll be back soon with another edition of Melt University 2020.